Hello and welcome to another edition of KHL Territory. We're in Ufa, and for the next dozen of minutes we're going to talk about Salavat Yulaya. 2011 Gagarin Cup champs had a mediocre regular season to say the most. In the playoffs, though, it doesn't matter much. Playoffs is the time when we get to see the real Salavat. Two seasons have gone by, but the championship memories are fresh at Ufa Arena. They're waiting for another cup year. The arena, the stands, the museum. Salvat's museum is probably the most visited one in the KHL, because every fan who visits the rink gets to go through its halls. This is Salavat Yulaev's game-worn jersey from 1975. Truth be told, Salavat doesn't like the media too much, but they do love their history and care about it deeply. The club's museum at the rink is absolutely phenomenal, and it feels like everyone did their part to make it what it is today. Hockey players won cups and other trophies, and museum staff did their best to put up game-worn jerseys from different seasons on the walls, along with other pieces of gear and hockey sticks. Although the most unusual items in the museum were brought here by the fans. Nobody talks much in Salavat around players. Players train hard, they're expected to have a successful player front. The club's management relies on them. Salavat won the Gagarin Cup two seasons ago and that was their biggest success in modern history. Back then it was a vivid team with a star-filled roster. It's not an easy task to build a team that would look like the one from 2011. It's not just us, it's impossible for any club to have a team like that anymore, says Salavat's general manager Oleg Gross. Even as KA St. Petersburg is yet to prove they have a championship team. Sure, they play well, but that doesn't guarantee them a cup. These days any team can win. The league has gotten more competitive. There were no big trades like today. Back then we were less extravagant. It's all in the rule book. Every trade is pretty big deal to go through. And it costs a lot of money. And not every team can afford it. So business is a little different these days. Besides, I don't think it's possible anymore to sign all the best players in the league. You can try, but I don't think it's gonna happen. The biggest difference is that nobody has been able to fill Alexander Radulov's shoes after his departure. Ufa is looking for a new hero, but that title still appears to be up for grabs. Talented Nikita Filarov is one of the key players for Salavat up front. He scored 13 goals and got 20 points in 35 games this season. But he's not the superhero the fans have been expecting. Playoffs is the whole other thing, says Filato. You can play really bad in the last games of the regular season, then get focused for the playoffs and do well. And vice versa, you can have an excellent finish to the regular season and then look terrible in the first playoff games. I don't think there's a necessary connection between the playoffs and regular season. It depends on many things. Whose conditioning is better, how many guys are injured, things like that. In 2011, Salavat had very few alumni from its junior hockey school. Today it's a different story. Salavat relies on its homegrown product. Some players who were born in Ufa made their way back home this season as well. One thing that didn't change is that they're still expected to have a successful season. We know what we're expected of and our goal is to fulfill the expectations. But you know what they say, sometimes you need to take a few steps back to go forward. Maybe we're going through rebuilding right now. Salavat is very inconsistent this season, and that's the biggest problem. They seem unable to keep the winning streak going. They're doing bad on the road this year. Their biggest winning streak is five games. The worst losing streak, also five games. However, Salavat is one of the most exciting teams to watch in the league. They're among top five teams in scoring. It's going to be a very busy playoff run for the 19-year-old goalie Andrei Vasilevsky. He played for Team Russia at the recent World Juniors. This is a key season for him. KHL playoffs is going to be one of his biggest tests. It's always a pleasure to play at Ufa Arena in front of a sold-out crowd, says Vasilevsky. Fans always cheer us up. I don't know if they think we play well or not, but I hope they will support us even through difficult times. You wouldn't believe how many gifts I get from the fans. And not just in Ufa. What do I get? Chocolate. After the World Juniors, I was given a chocolate medal.
Andrei's backup has experienced Alexei Volkov. He was Alexander Yuramenko's backup when Dynamo won the Gagarin Cup. Dmitry Makarov is Salavat's top scorer. Ufa is his hometown. This season he almost set his new career KHL high in points. He was just three points short of his all-time best record of 43 points. Kirill Kaltsov is an ace up the sleeve for any coach. This season he did set a new career KHL high for himself with 11 goals and 35 points. Igor Mirnov is Salavat's top goal scorer. This season he scored 18 goals. During the season Salavat struggled through the injuries of their top players. It wasn't easy for them to play consistently without Zinoviev, Kaltsov, Sapel, Hardikan and Glukov, Proshkin and many others. Vitaly Proshkin skated for the first time in months just this past February. He hasn't played a game since September and he's very thankful to the fans for their support. Ufa knows and loves their hockey, he says. We flew back to Ufa tonight and fans were talking to us and taking pictures. They asked us questions about the playoffs. I met a family who lives 200 kilometers away from Ufa and they still come to the games. It's a hockey town. Salavat has a great potential. Besides Proshkin, Salavat expects more out of Latvian Olympian defenseman Artur Kulda. Tomer Zaborski, who joined the team from Omsk this season, also has a lot of room to improve. Nikita Filatov scored 20 points this season, but he's expected to do better than this. Sergei Zinoviev missed a lot of games because of an injury, but he's one of the few players who knows how to get wins in the playoffs. Zinoviev played for Team Russia at the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver. Perhaps he lacks motivation to play to his full potential in the regular season, but playoffs change everything. He's hitting the gym hard these days. He's always the last one to live. These injuries got in the way of the hockey we like to play, says head coach Vladimir Yurzina. We had to simplify our game and play safe. In times like this you need dedication and good work ethic. The atmosphere in Salavat's dressing room on the verge of the playoffs wasn't very optimistic. Everyone understood there was a lot of work ahead of them. Some players were still adjusting to the team, but every each one of these men is a professional. Our show came to Ufa on a hockey day celebration. We gained access to Salavat's dressing room during the game. Players were having a few laughs, Nikita Filato was texting someone. Stuff like that can only happen when Salavat plays against their fans. I've always been saying that it's better to play in a place like this rather than somewhere where people don't truly care about the game. You should never forget that you play for your fans, your family and your friends. It's great to feel that fans are really into it in Ufa. It's never a bother to spend 10 or 15 minutes with a fan taking a picture or signing an autograph. And you absolutely have to see this. In the halls of Ufa Arena you can find fine art like this, kids' drawings about hockey. These are their first yet very vivid impressions on hockey. Every drawing has the painter's name beneath it. If you're one of those who drew this, you can be assured. Salavat's management, coaches, players and their guests look at them every day. These are little details, but combined they make Salavat the great club that it is. I don't remember any other place where it would be so many kids' drawings and our pictures hung on the walls. I think it's great. This is the office of Salavat's general manager Oleg Ross. He is the biggest collector of hockey pucks and other stuff around the league.
Not all of these are necessarily collector's items. I just like to have a lot of hockey stuff around me. It's just something I do. I started with 10 bucks in my office, and then it went to 20, then it went to 30, and it just kept going and going. Now everybody knows I collect bucks, and I have nowhere to put them. Look, they just keep bringing them in. Once I have a few more, I think I'll put another shelf up or something. We have them up in VIP suites, our restaurant, and many other places. His collection is one of the things the region can be proud of. It's constantly renewed. When his friends and other guests come to his office, they will always have something to talk about. Besides, that slims down gift ideas, doesn't it? We will learn what the future holds for Gross, Yurzinov and their team very soon. One of the most offensively minded teams in the league intends to prove once again they're the most powerful team in the East.